Good evening. I'm Scott Pelley, and this is 60 Minutes Presents. There's no age requirement when it comes to talent, initiative, or ability. And over the years, 60 Minutes has encountered some amazing kids with amazing gifts in the most unlikely places. Tonight, we revisit three of them, beginning with a story that Morley Safer reported in October about a very young scientist investigating pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic cancer is one of the most aggressive and deadly cancers, in part, because often by the time it's diagnosed, the disease has spread to other parts of the body. So when news broke that a test had been developed that might detect early pancreatic cancer, the research world not only took notice, it went into shock. For the test hadn't been developed by some renowned cancer research institute, but by a boy wonder a 15-year-old high school freshman named Jack Andreka. He then convinced an eminent cancer researcher to let him use his lab to develop his theory, all before he even had a license to drive. And while the test must undergo years of clinical trials, the biotech industry has already beaten a path to Jack's door. This is Jack Andreka as he beats out 1,500 contestants and wins the grand prize at the Intel International Science Fair with his invention. Like a modern day Rocky, this self-described science geek took the stage and $100,000 in prize money. Pure, unadulterated, adolescent joy. When you won the Intel Award, your reaction went viral, correct? Yes, yes it did. It's a no-joke award. I wasn't expecting any awards, Ed. Then when I won, I was just flabbergasted. I was, like, freaking out. I was just like, what? <laughs> yes, you were. Me? Jack Andreka's journey from suburban Baltimore high school freshman to cancer researcher began at age 14, when a family friend died of pancreatic cancer. Shocked that there's no reliable early test for the disease, Jack decided he would develop one. He began probing the internet for everything he could find about pancreatic cancer biomarkers. He read research articles during class, and in the middle of biology, while stealthily reading a medical journal, he says inspiration hit. The teacher was not amused. I swear she has, like, eyes on the back of her head or something. She sees me, and she storms up to my desk and is like, Mr. Andrinka, what is this? And, like, snatches it out of my hand. As if you had Playboy magazine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, it was just a science article. Shouldn't this be a good thing? When he told his parents, Steve and Jane Andrinka, about his project, they weren't exactly encouraging. My reaction wasn't a good one. I said, <laughs> I was, Jack, isn't that a little far-fetched? And I know that when you're 14, you can't just run out and get a lab. A lot of people, you know, are like, we don't train middle schoolers. But Jack decided to find one that did. Over the course of four months, he prepared a test protocol for his theory and sent it out to 200 cancer researchers. I essentially had to send them my budget, my procedure, my timeline and materials list. And I actually had 199 rejections out of those. Some professors ripped apart my procedure completely. But one professor, Dr. Aaron Bon Maicha, finally said yes. An encouraging yes. It was like, this idea might work. And he starts interrogating me, kind of, firing these questions, trying to sink my procedure in a way. But I answered all of them. Dr. Anirban Maitra was a professor of oncology at Johns Hopkins University and now heads pancreatic cancer research at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston. He says his curiosity was piqued by Jack's proposal. Well, it's not every day that you get an email from a 15-year-old that comes with a detailed protocol with methods and supplies and what pitfalls you might run into. And I said, maybe I'll get you a corner in my lab and we'll have one of the postdoctoral fellows supervising you. Let's see where all this, this all goes. <laughs> For the next seven months after school and on weekends, Jack's mother would drop him off at the lab where he learned basic lab techniques and worked on developing his cancer test. Finally, one day in March, I realized this was actually working. Like, it was working amazingly because it was passing all of these preliminary tests. And I run out 
and I'm pretty much like screaming around the lab. I finally go out and rush into my mom's car and like me and her are screaming in the car and then of course I have to go the next day. <laughs> Jack's test detects an unusually high level of mesothelin, a protein that the body produces in pancreatic cancer's early and most treatable stage. What exactly are you doing now? So essentially what this is, is it's one of my strips. And what you do is you first get an original measurement of how the electricity flows across it. The paper strip is coated with a carbon substance that attracts mesothelin. It is placed in an apparatus that Jack built in his parents' garage. And I'm just taking out one single drop of blood here. A high level of mesothelin in a patient's blood sample may indicate the first stages of pancreatic cancer. See how it's increased? It's increased by about two times here. And so what that means is that there's a really high level of this one protein there, and that signals the presence of pancreatic cancer for me. While years of clinical trials must be done, there is no FDA-approved test that can reliably measure mesothelin. Dr. Maitra says a test of this kind that could detect pancreatic cancer in its earliest stage could save thousands of lives. He did hone in to the most important missing aspect in terms of pancreatic cancer, which is we don't really have good early detection. There is nothing like a PSA test or a colonoscopy or a mammogram that you can get for the pancreas at this point in time. So by the time the majority of patients present, they already have tumor that has spread outside the pancreas, and those patients typically don't do very well. He says the test, which cost Jack three cents a strip to make, is remarkably elegant in its simplicity. It's remarkable what you've achieved and what you've come up with, there's no question. Have the brain men come to talk to you and want to figure you out? No, actually, no one has approached me to do like an autopsy of my brain yet. <laughs> but um, a, a scan. A we scan, say. but like maybe later on an autopsy. But um, really, I don't think it's that I'm really smart. I, I mean, I know people that are way smarter than me. You can be a genius, but if you don't have the creativity to put that knowledge to use, then you just have a bunch of knowledge and nothing else. I mean, like, then you're just as good as my smartphone. His parents say he's been obsessed with science since he was a toddler, conducting experiments even as a three-year-old. School for him was so easy, his parents tried to keep him engaged by encouraging science projects at home. My family isn't the typical family. Like, we're, instead of, like, talking about football, we have, like, all these science magazines all scattered throughout our house, and we talk to them at dinner. After Jack decided to cultivate E. coli just for the fun of it on the kitchen stove, his parents insisted that he and his older brother, Luke, use the basement as their lab. Their parents believe the less they know about what goes on down there, the better. I gather the rule of the house is don't burn down the house and don't kill yourself. Pretty much. It's don't blow up the house. I, I want to come home and have a place to live. What do they do down there? I don't really know because I don't go down there much. And they may have reason for concern. Clearly, neatness does not count. Last year, Luke cooked up some nitroglycerin just to see if he could. And I was just interested to see, could I make it down here? Uh, it worked. It also drew the attention of the FBI, who they say sent a letter letting them know that their internet purchasing history had been noted by the feds. They were a little concerned. <laughs> uh, it can impose I don't know why I'm laughing. But these days, Jack doesn't have much time for messing in the basement. Jack and Jack. His test idea has made him a star speaker at medical conferences all over the world. So with me, I just used Google and Wikipedia to find a new way to detect pancreatic cancer. At the beginning of this, I didn't even know I had a pancreas. So if I could do that... And he's become a regular at the White House. Four visits this year alone. Where's Jack? There he is. Jack, stand up. You've also become a heavy-duty celebrity. It's pretty insane. I mean, you see Barack Obama... And the President White... Barack Obama. Yeah, President Barack Obama. <laughs> I'm just like, hello, Mr. President. And then... Hello, First Lady. It's just like, it's crazy. In the past year, he's spoken in Canada, Italy, Australia, Greece, the United Nations, and so far, four trips to England. 
Earlier this year, I including this address he gave to the renowned Royal Society of Medicine about his test and the problems with current cancer diagnostics. I typed this into the internet and... This 15-year-old has all the confidence of a physician. And what it comes up with is I could be going through cocaine withdrawal, I could have cancer, or I could be pregnant. So... A stand-up physician. So what I see in the future of medical diagnostics is a shift from the symptom base to more of a diagnostic antibody-based approach, such as a sensor. Working the crowds of academics and checking out Cambridge University, no big deal. Could you study here? Yes. Jack easily maintains a 4.0 GPA in school, despite a spotty attendance record. You're still in high school, correct? Yeah. Why bother? <laughs> uh, well, the reason I still bother with high school is because of my mom. She, she's really like, you have to do high school and you have to go to college, but they're being kind of lenient with me right now. Do you want tea? Jack's family is pretty laid back about his success, low pressure, and a high sense of humor. They say that all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. It seems that you've been doing all work. Well, I would say all play, no work, because for me, going to the lab is pretty much play. I mean, it's the funnest thing ever. Jack holds the patent on his cancer test, and with the help of his patent lawyer, is looking to license the technology to a pharmaceutical company in the next few months. Now, the actual testing on people or animals, mm -hmm. I gather you're not interested in doing that. So I did some preliminary studies, however, one thing I don't want to do is end up as a lab rat. I kind of want to be able to come up with a new idea and then really just move on to the next idea and have other people do their repetitive trials. Well, where does that stand right now? I have enough data to prove that this works, and so now I'm going to give it to the pharmaceutical companies to run it through like, clinical trials and stuff. He believes that one day his invention will be in every doctor's office and even on pharmacy shelves. But Dr. Maitra, who's seen so many promising ideas flame out when it comes to pancreatic cancer, urges caution. Pancreatic cancer is a very humbling disease. Every time we think we have a home run, we barely get to first base. As a test, it is still a very long way off. And the reason for that is because such a test cannot be marketed unless it has been validated in large clinical trials. And that cannot be done in a small lab, that cannot be done by a 15-year-old. But that does not detract in any way from the remarkable achievement of this young man. I think he's brilliant. I was sitting in class, and suddenly it hit me. Between speaking engagements and the occasional <laughs> appearance at school, Jack is back in the lab working on new diagnostic and environmental tests. Congratulations. And while he now moves in very adult circles, Jack says when it comes to his future, he's just like any other lost teenager. I actually have no clue what I want to do when I grow up. I mean, hopefully something in science I'll be in, and hopefully I'll be doing work that will help change the world. Can you raise a gifted child in a normal home? Go to 60minutesovertime.com, sponsored by Pfizer.